Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed 2. And this is a little bit odd because you're currently staring out of the back window of my 2008 Seat Ibiza as I drive home from work. <laughs> now, why you're doing this is because in a minute I'm going to demonstrate a fault that I've got with the car. It is a brake squeal. It is really, really bloody annoying. And uh, normally when you get a brake squeal, it's when you apply the brakes. Mine is when the brakes are not applied and I'm going along at a very sort of slow speed, below 30 miles an hour. I'm getting this kind of brake drag, this really bad squeal. And I will show you that in just a moment. And then moving on, the rest of the video is just going to be me in trying to investigate and sort of uh, cure this squeal. And there probably will be a part two to this video. But without further ado, let me just demonstrate this really annoying problem. So doing a bit of work on Little Red today, got my own problems, well not a big problem really, it's a weird one this, I was chatting to Robbie on the uh, on the 305 about this on Sunday, concerns of rear brakes, I've never come across this before, and uh, what happened, I, I did a video, oh god it would have been a couple of years ago when I replaced the rear brake discs on this uh, Ibiza here, and I don't know, it was okay for a little while, and it started to get a kind of a brake squeal, and it's not normal, like when you'd normally put your foot on a brake, you, you often get a brake squeal if you don't put copper slip around the sort of uh, brake pad there, but I've done all that, but it was it's just when you're sort of just coasting through town, if you're in traffic for example, or you're going at about 20 miles an hour, there's just a bit of squeal coming from the, well I think it's this side or, or maybe the other side on the back brakes really bloody annoying um, just to sort of squeal and then when you pick up speed it goes it goes away uh, what I've done also is that I changed the caliper because one of the caliper the handbrakes seized on one of the calipers so I've had new calipers put on I even changed the brake pads because the brake pads that I originally got didn't have a chamfered edge and they were quite cheap to be honest so I've got Bembro brake pads anyway I just can't you know it's weird it's almost like a stone or something's trapped behind the back of the uh, dust cover but I don't think it is and uh, when the wheels on it's quite free it's quite free turning there is a there is a tiny little bit of drag as you'd expect on the sort of caliper there I mean I think that's because the brake pads are new but I so say I've changed the pads and no no change at all so yeah I mean it's a, bit, it's a little bit frustrating but so what I'm going to do decided to do today is just going to uh, change these discs because these discs when I put them on these were coated these had a special coating on these discs that uh, was supposed to prevent rust because these discs on uh, these Ibethers on the Golf on the Polo they're, they're notorious for just having a little bit of lip rust around there that builds up and then eventually you get an advisory on your MOT and uh, this, these had a special coating on them which was supposed to prevent that and it hasn't worked it's starting even what less than two years I guess but it's starting to build up rust again and I did see on, on a little on a forum uh, a couple well one guy said that he'd bought these discs with the special coating and he'd had the same problem he had sort of what he called a brake drag squeal so I don't know so I've just got standard discs now um, I think these are Blistine, I think that's it, Blistine, I've used these before, I can't even remember what these ones were, I've got a feeling they were Bembro though, they weren't the cheapest, but these things are so damn cheap anyway, uh, this is a recognised make and these are about £25 a pair, so yeah I'm just going to swap that out today, just going to drop the disc out, I might even, if I get time, paint the caliper because it's starting to corrode and this was all red originally when I got the car. So uh, I might, I've got some red caliper paint, I might even give the caliper a bit of a paint over. So yeah, that's, so there you go, this is what old Fred does, other than, you know, it's not all about radio. Um, right, so got the disc off, 
Um, I was going to show you something else on this video, but that didn't work out. <laughs> so I thought I might as well carry on with this job. So yeah, we got the disc off, and it seems absolutely fine. There is a slight bit of scoring on the back, but uh, although the dust cover, the brake is very rusty, and it 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 is looking quite sort of crusty in places. Um, if it was a simple job of doing a couple of bolts and taking this off I would replace it but you have to take off the hub which obviously that's the wheel that's the wheel bearing you need a, need a bearing puller and really you might as well end up replacing the wheel bearing um, I haven't got the equipment for that and that's, that's a little bit too much that I really want to get into but other than a little bit of surface rust on a crusty I can't see any, anything that's been rubbing on the disc it's very odd and the disc itself, what it says, seeing as it's not, it's not done. It's only probably done about a thousand miles. And uh, yeah, there's a, couple, there's a very slight score, but nothing to really indicate why that would be um, making that noise. It's kind of odd. A lot of people might put up with it, but I was, I was chatting to Robbie. And it's the same as me. You get little things that go wrong with your car. And it's only really your time, as long as you're capable of doing it yourself. And as I said, these discs are pretty, well, they are very cheap. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a new disc on, put everything back together, redo all of the copper grease. Although they say the brakes aren't squealing when they're being applied, it's only when they're just slightly dragging. But I'm going to redo all of the copper grease on the back of the pads there. I've, wound the, I've already wound the caliper back and uh, yeah I'm going to put it back together and see what happens and uh, I've, I've got the other side to do but I'll do this side first and see if that we sort of you know reduces it or cures it and I might not have to do the other side I have got the disc but uh, as I say I might paint these calipers I think they, they sort of deserve a bit of a paint um, Keep saying I'm going to get rid of the car, get a get a new car. I've been looking at new cars; they're so so expensive, really, for something nice. Um, I will eventually replace the car, but uh, at the moment, as I say, we're going to uh, carry on and say all this coronavirus thing going around at the moment. I hope everything is fine in 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 your place. I mean, we've got this on the news all the time. This coronavirus. There's only I think about. 280 something like that cases in the UK at the moment but it's getting um, getting quite bad very bad in Italy and of course China right I'll put a disc on and I'll do one little final update at the end so thanks for tuning in thanks for staying with it okay so a little update I, I swapped the disc on and I just checked to see if it was running true and it just seemed to be slightly moving in and out almost like it was warped and I thought that's odd, don't like the look at that. So I put the original disc back on. I don't know what you can see on this camera. If you look at the gap there, when I rotate the disc, it goes almost tight to the caliper carrier, and then it moves out again. It's only about two millimeter tight out. And I find that quite odd and uh, it's almost like there's no play in the hub bearing because I've checked that but it's uh, almost like the disc is warped but obviously I've put the new disc on and it's exactly the same so it can't be the disc so it has to be something on the hub carrier I would have thought sorry the uh, the wheel bearing yeah that's definitely moving moving in and out that's a bit odd um, like I say there's no play on the wheel bearing itself hmm but that might that might be the drag on the brakes if that uh, isn't running completely true well that's interesting I'm just gonna take the disc off again and uh, see if I can sort of see any any sort of play in and out on the bearing So here we are, back on the, uh, the wheel bearing again. It's weird, there's, there's no playing it, um, no knock. That's, it's 
doesn't seem to... I just thought it was weird, isn't it? Just to see if there was any rust or anything that would cause the disc not to go on straight. I think what I'm going to do is get some paper, give that a clean, clean that right up, certainly try and get all of the sort of slight surface rust off if you like, but uh, maybe it's not, this disc isn't seating properly. I can't imagine that that would buckle, to be honest. It's possible I suppose. I'd have to try and rig up some kind of a uh, some kind of device here that I could check to see if it's running true. But uh, it's, it's it's when it goes round at the it's the sort of mounting screw there when it's, it's that edge that seems to be running out. Anyway, I'm going to give it a clean up, I think, and then maybe pop the disc back on. See if that cures it. It's weird. Okay, I've cleaned it all up. It might have been a false alarm because what I've realised was I had the little securing bolt in, and uh, so what I've done, I put a, I've put a wheel nut in on the other side there just to sort of balance that and uh, to make sure that the disc is on the hub tight. And now, yeah, it's running true. So it might have just not been tight on the hub because it was slightly pulled to one side. I'm not sure. But anyway, might have been that I've cleaned some of the rust off. But anyway, I'm happy with that. It's, it's running completely true now. So, well, didn't do any harm anyway. <laughs> to clean that up, it didn't do it any harm anyway. So we've got a new disc on, so yeah, I can build up the rear brakes now. I don't, I'm not sure that was the cause. I thought I might have sussed it there, but it was a bit odd that that was kind of buckled on the hub. I would have thought the bearing would have failed if it had uh, gone that bad. But there you go. Things that you uh, things that you do when you're working on your car. Right, I'm going to rebuild it back up now. Well, that's that back together. So, you have a little bit of drag on the sort of pads, but you, you know, you always get that. Um... Got to remember to take that <laughs> take that bolt out before I try and put the wheel on. So, well, you know, we see how we go from there. As I say, I thought I had something when I saw that disc wobble, but it's just me looking a little bit too deep into the job, maybe overthinking, looking for faults. But uh, I think I might just do the caliper. I might just give that a coat of red paint while I'm here. Why not? I think it sort of deserves it. As I say, it's uh, looking a little bit crusty. So yeah, I might just sort of give that a wire brush. A bit of red paint and I'll finish up the video. Thanks for sticking with this by the way. I do appreciate your view time. I know it's a little bit boring sometimes on Fred in the Shed too, but I appreciate it. Okay, so decided to paint it. <laughs> it's vanity, isn't it? But I mean, I, I used to have them red when I got the car. And uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of think that it... I, I like sort of red calipers on a sporty car. I'm not so sure it looks so good on a you know, a, a, a normal car, um, the Volvo ones I just did gold, but it's got a little decal on there as well, and yeah, I think that's cleaned them up really, really nice actually, to me anyway, you might disagree, put it in the comments, you might think it looks a little bit sort of two boy racerish. I get that, so there you go, that's as far as we're going to go with this today, if I can get the light to stay there, so, so I'm going to see how that disc runs, it's got a bed in a little bit, hopefully, it will have completely eradicated that eradicated that squeal or maybe if it cuts it down I have to do the other side but uh, for now I think that's all you can do in it I mean that, that's a new a new caliper new brake pads new disc really there's not a lot else I can do so there you go a different sort of video on Fred in the Shed too I like doing these videos actually um, you know Fred in the Shed one's great I like doing those videos as well but I have got 16 thousand subscribers whereas on here it's, it's, it's a little bit more personal I feel I can sort of relax a little bit more chat to you sort of guys and girls and uh, you know just not worry so much about sort of audience retention and things like that people getting bored 
because I say this, there's so many sort of few people watch this channel and I really, really do appreciate your views and I also really look forward to the comments over on Fred 2 and the old thumbs up, I like to sort of see those as well. Um, it's just, you know, much more sort of relaxed and like I say, it's a little bit more me really, I can sort of tend to say what I want. And uh, that's it. Well, I hope you're all well. This coronavirus thing is, yeah, it's getting bad. As I think as, as I'm making this video, what are we on now? Something like the 8th of March or whatever it is, 9th of March. Um, I think we're two, 278 cases in the UK. That's that's not a great deal, but it is kind of worrying with the, uh, if you've got elderly parents like I have, and that, that's a bit sort of worrying. And obviously the three point seven three point seven percent fatality rate on this particular virus, which um, yeah that ain't so good. But anyway, so let's hope it all dies down and it's a storm in a teacup. None of us get it, or any of our family or friends get it. But uh, so thinking of thinking of you all there, uh, especially if anyone's watching this in Italy. I don't think anyone does. But uh, anyway, waffling on too much. Right, a big big thanks up as as always. A big thank you for watching Fred in the Shed 2 and there you go you're watch, you, you watching paint dry <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this anyway going to cut it off now as I say big thank you always uh, always really really welcome your views on here really appreciate it and uh, stay safe and I'll catch you all on the next one